thank you very much for joining in. And we're here with Sifu Al's podcast, Beyond Kicking and Punching uh, podcast for Sifu Al de Cascos. I'm so excited to listen to uh, Sifu Yarn from Germany and all the stories he's going to, uh, I guess, tell us about training in the early 70s, 80s with Sifu Al de Cascos. I mean, I'm sure they've got some amazing stories in history. So again, be prepared to write down some gold nuggets because I'm sure beside the stories, there's going to be life lessons that you can apply to everyday living, not just the martial arts. So again, thank you very, very much for joining in. Everybody, let's give Sifu Al a hand. Sifu Al. Hello. All right. Aloha from Hawaii. Sunny, sunny. We have a nice sunny day here. Not sunny in Canada, but sunny here. I am so privileged to have one of my very best black belts out of Germany that has done so much for us in WHKD or One Hot Kindle. Those of you that have been with us for the last 30, 40 years understand where I'm coming from. But for those of you that have just joined, well, say within the last 10 years or so, there's there's a lot of history you need to catch up on. History that we have in the martial arts, especially in Germany, is really way beyond because it's so much things has changed and we have innovated so much things that many parts of Europe or in the United States for that matter, or in the world have seen what we have done and have or tried to mimic what we could do. So, you know, there's so much I can talk about Sifu Yarn Tigger, but I'm gonna let him get in on this because it's, it is after all about him and um, let him tell us more about him and maybe the rabbits that are running around his house, okay? <laughs> Okay, so Sifu Yan Tidgar, I guess we'll start with some questions, okay? Okay, I hope you had enough coffee to stay awake with me because I know it's, go it's going to be fun. Yarn, if you don't mind, how old were you when you started? Late, I'm 18. I started with uh, Shotokan Karate, 70, uh, 1973, and a Budo Clip Nippon here in Hamburg. Yeah? It was one of the biggest uh, martial arts uh, organization in the north of Germany and a very famous uh, martial arts club. But they only have uh, karate and, and judo. But it was very, in, in the beginning of the 70s, it was very famous judo, karate, and a little bit taekwondo. But nobody knows something about uh, uh, kung fu. I, I don't know what, what kung fu is. Huh? First time, uh, 1974. If we went to, to Berlin for, for the demonstration, uh, uh, George Brickner organized it. And this was the first time I saw uh, what, what is Kung Fu. If, before we, if we do karate, we just uh, made maybe three techniques, you know, front kick, straight punch, and one block. You know? And uh, in Berlin, if I, saw, I, I saw you, I saw, I think, Eric Lee too. I just remember, but I think Eric Lee too. And I, I saw Bill Wallace huh? and all these guys jumping around or kicking around and, and, and Michael and me, Michael Timmerman, huh? one of my best friends in my life. Uh, we are too, totally impressed with what, what we see there. I, I, I never before saw a, a butterfly kick. Very impressive for us. Huh? Yeah, that was in 1974 in Berlin. Uh, 1974, right, in Berlin. Yeah. At that time, there was no Kung Fu in uh, Budoklam de Pond. No, 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 no. Yeah. And uh, when you found out that I was going to be in Hamburg, Germany at Budoklam de Pond, what was your reaction? If I remember right, you started in Budoklam de Pond in 1975, right? Yeah, I yes. think, I don't know. I, I did two years karate and I just fought uh, traditional karate tournaments and uh, under, under uh, teaching under Get Lemons and Vera Lemons and Wolfram Galwashos. Uh, but in 1975, if you started, 
uh, one of Kondo and Budu Klip Nippon, you just gave a, a, a little a seminar and we went over to see uh, what's the difference between karate and kung fu. Huh? It was also, I, I remember at that time, um, Mike, Mike and me, we, we joined your seminar and you show a lot of, lot of for that time, a lot of fantastic techniques for us. And um, you, you did street fighting, right? Some repetition techniques, very fast. And we are standing there and looking with big eyes, <laughs> and, et cetera. If I trained with Michael and I, <laughs> I, I remember that, Sifu. Huh? Uh, I made a stupid question. I asked you, uh, maybe can you show me again? And you take me just for, for show uh, what you mean under your techniques. Huh? My uh, dummy. You, yeah, yeah, my dummy, yeah, right. And <laughs> you saw me, okay, attack me with a front kick, and I did it, and then I only feel bom, 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 and I was down on the floor. Huh? And this was a point uh, for me to change from karate to kung fu. Huh? <laughs> awesome. But, yeah. But, but it was another, another very important reason. In that time, the karate instructor, like Wolfram Galwashos, he's dead now. He was my first instructor. He was very hard. They use all the beginners as dummies. I remember if I joined with Michael 1973 in November, the Budo Club Nippon, three, it was a group of beginners, maybe 40, 45 people, huh? a full room. Huh? And three months later, they all gone. And if you go to karate uh, training, uh, sometimes I'm afraid I go there, to become stronger. I, I, I just 18 years, huh? I'm a young man, I want to be stronger. Yeah? Uh, but it was no good training. Yeah? And if we, uh, if we join your seminar and after your techniques, but you told one thing, uh, or one thing you say or saw, you don't show us what I can do, you show us or you tell us what I know. And what that was the main difference between you and the old karate teachers like Galwashos. This guy show only what he can do. What, what he can do is not good for me. Uh, but you show us what is possible. That's a difference. It was, it was a, a very, very big difference. Uh. Mm -hmm. And then it was a time for us to change it from, uh, uh, from karate to one up kendo. Uh. I think mm -hmm. it was a good de decision, yeah? uh, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, there's so much things has happened in your life. You know, and um, everything has been very positive from my point of view. I know that we have some pictures of you of training at the very, very beginning. We were all young, a little bit more skinnier and had more hair on the head. Malia did a lot, you know, to help people get into condition. And you remember when I was, uh, I hurt myself and Malia was teaching the class. At that time you broke your leg? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. I remember when she used to come back and say is that at the very beginning where it was very difficult because it was hard for the man students to take, to listen from her. But, you know, I know that her training was hard enough but uh, on you folks so that when I got well again and back into training, we move forward. But the question is now is that when did we begin? Because I forget. When did we begin to do and uh, the demo team. What year was that we started to do the demo team? If I remember right, you came in Germany in 1975. And after a while, you leave Germany for, for a project in the United States and you send um, Fred King over, right? If I remember right, Fred King started first time to make a, a little demonstration team. That was the first, first time he made a little demonstration team. And uh, later, Michael Eppert came, and then maybe six six months later, you came back. And then we started with a demo team, also with uh, with our Saturday training, each Saturday uh, training two or three hours in, 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 in the Gilbertstrasse, and that was the beginning. Was a demonstration team. You know? Was this the place that you rest? You met the rest of the people that eventually joined the demo team: Christian Wolf, Dassos, Winford. Was that the time that you met them the first yeah. time? No, Winfield was not there. And that time was uh, uh, Dassel's Christian, uh, Michael, me, and, and 
uh, Thorsten Muxfeld, maybe you remember him, but uh, Wolfgang Gier, Wolfgang, Wolfgang was also there. Huh? The rest of the guy, uh, uh, I, I forget the name. Yeah. One very good thought we had, and I'm going to jump into um, Hawaii, because you folks came to Hawaii I back, I think, in 1997. 96 or 97? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, Petra? It what? was 96. 96 or 97? It was 96. 96 in June. 97. Oh, Jan, you're in trouble. You, <laughs> you, you are in That's trouble. What I told you that I'm under control. July. 97, you married. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You see, I know you was going to be to trouble. You cannot remember that date you in trouble. <laughs> um, that that was a very special day to all of us. Uh, and uh, you and Patrick looked very beautiful uh, and handsome on the beach when we did that. And I think um, that was so memorable, especially about a month later when Petra ended up with a whole bunch of wedding pictures. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Isn't that a beautiful couple there? Beautiful. Wow. And you know, that's tradition. When you see a white shirt, black pants and red sash, which was no different from the way that we demonstrated in Germany anyway, using sashes <laughs> like we did. So, so, you know, that the, the wedding wasn't a demonstration. It was for real, right? Right. Yeah. All right. It's very good. Let's get back into Germany. We um, eventually, when I left, you became the first president of the organization that we formed to, to keep together the One Hop Kundo group. And there's been so many demonstrations you folks did, bringing the Costco show team all over the, uh, Europe. But let's show a picture of the first demo team with that we had, and it was a crazy uniform that we had that I just made with, with the V. We made all of the uniforms ourselves. And, and I remember that when we begin to start putting uniforms into colors, like I say, okay, Christian Wolf, you're gonna wear blue. Um, Michael Timmim would wear it green and, and, and a yarn, I forgot the color that we wear. You folks' eyes just became really wide because you said it wasn't the traditional Kung Fu uniform we were using for training. We were using uniform that was for show. And what was great about it, it was so innovative and different from a lot of demonstration people at that time. That is what made you folks outstanding aside from the excellent demonstrations that you folks did. All of you folks were really good. And I'm very, very proud to, to see that it has continued on up to today, maybe, or even longer into the future. See for Yarn, when you joined One Hop Kyondo at 18 years old or 19 years old, what belt were you in karate before you came in? I, I was... Um... An orange belt. And how long did it take you to get to your orange belt then? It was two, two years, right, two years. Tell me, once you became a student of One Hop Kyundo, what was the most happiest point in your life in the martial arts? Uh, okay, I remember that time, maybe we are around you as, as, as green belt in your group. And someday we sit together and you told us if you want to leave Germany, you want to have a strong group of maybe 20 or 25 or 30 black belts here in Germany. That you, to you told us. And if you told us this, I was thinking by myself, okay, and I want to be one of them. That was my personal decision. Oops. Well, that's that's the new ones, yeah. That was great. That's it's fantastic. Episode. You know, what was the point in your life in One Hop Kyundo, especially in competition? What was the best tournament you competed in and felt you were up there? Uh, one thing is interesting. Everybody has different personality. Huh? Um, 
I like tournament and I like also to fight, but my, my personal goal was never to become a world champion, like Emmanuel, huh? that was never my goal. Huh? I just like it to fight. And for myself, I believe uh, I won many times, but I also lost. Huh? And my, my best, my best uh, experience was if I won, I think it was a, yeah, it was a surprise for my work. Belohnung, what is Belohnung, Josie, Petra? Um, your incentive. Uh, yeah. It's your incentive. But, uh, but the other thing is, if you lost the tournament or you lost the fight, uh, to stand up and make it better next time, I think that's more important uh, than to win. Uh. Well, I wasn't surprised with any of you folks, because I knew that whenever you folks were going in, you folks would win. I had confidence in the group. That's a I had confidence in the way that all of you fought uh, and demonstrated. And you represented the Costco's One Hop Kyondo and also the show team so well that I think this was a heavy reason that many of the people joined One Hop Kyondo because of what you folks did. Now, I know that one of the things that I was really proud of was when you folks did the television show, I, I don't know the name of it, the one there, the detective show, the criminal criminal show, what was it called? There was one, they call it uh, Tartot, maybe crime scene, and with Scott Skerge, who was a famous oh. actor here in Germany, and uh, one of the famous um, producer was Jürgen Roland, that was also a very famous uh, producer. Huh? Uh, let, let me tell about this time at, it was a demo team. Uh, I remember if we walk around to a demonstration with you, or always the, 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 the producer of the, of the shows, they, they, call, they call us Elder Cascos and his demonstration team, if you remember that. And uh, after, if you're leaving 82 Germany, that was a point, and we changed it a little bit, and we call it Da Cascos Kung Fu Show Team. It, it was the same, but, but the difference was, in that time, uh, you went with us to a demonstration. You were the main uh, uh, person in that, in that point. We all say, oh, that's Elder Cascos, with his demonstration team, Kung Fu show team. And after we did that, uh, we six, uh, we six, Michael, Christian, Dassos, uh, uh, Emmanuel, Winfried, we, we talk, we, we change it a little, we call it the Cascos Kung Fu show team. We did a lot of demonstrations all over Europe. Do you remember when we went to Yugoslavia? Uh, I was not there in Yugoslavia. Uh -huh. There's a lot of nice stories, but in Yugoslavia, I, I was not there. But you remember going to Italy when we fought in Italy? Yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah, but <laughs> in Italy, I was not there. Also not there. Oh, you wasn't in Italy? No, no, no. no. And, and, and that time, uh, I, I had my own group in, 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 in Harbor. If I started Kung Fu, if you remember 1978, we started the Kung Fu group in Harbor. Yes, yes. Michael, because Michael and me. Huh? Uh, mm -hmm. And later, one and a half year later, Michael went to Lübeck and I stay in Harbor. And in that time, if we went to, to Croatia and to Italy, uh, I had my full job and I have my teach my, my, my group over there, then I was not there. How, how, how did we start in Harbor? Harbor, the city on the other side of the river, and it's, it's, a, it's a own city. And there was a martial artist uh, calling uh, Gerd Kohlenberg. And he asked you for a, a Kung Fu group over there. Mm -hmm. And you, you told him, okay, you, you, you will send him an instructor. And uh, you sent us, Michael and me. At that time, we are just, we are blue belts. We are not brown belts or black belts, we are, we are blue belts. But, but you told him, I sent you two instructors. They will teach one of Kendo, not me. Uh, they will do that. 
How long, how long did we have that school in Harburg? How many years? So the main school in Harburg was over 30 years, from, from and, 1984 to uh, 2015. But we, and who was, who was your number one student there? Oh, uh, I think <laughs> all my black belts are top students, but one of the best fighters or, uh, from Harburg, one of the best fighters was Mike Böttcher. Huh? Many times, uh, yeah, that's my, Mike, yeah? and also Arnold. Uh, uh, but Mike was many times a world champion in different organization. One of the best fighters uh, we have in what I can do. Huh? I always say that when people talk about you or when they hate you, is because you did something good that they cannot do. And I know that a lot of people used to talk about one hop Kyundo there, and. It was because of the many champions that we developed in Germany internationally. Can you tell me more about the champions that we have? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> funny, little story, funny. Uh, point one is, if you leave Germany, 82, you leave six black belts behind you, but we are very young and we had not so much life experience. And in that time, after leaving, after you leaving Germany, uh, people from other generation, uh, uh, organization came to us and asked us, now, we, now your instructor is gone, the Casco is back in the United States, uh, came over to our organization. The results from these people that, that's are not, not bad people. Huh? They're just people from other organizations. They want us to join their uh, organization. Huh? But uh, these people uh, made us, I think, a little bit afraid. And we, we jump more together. We stay more together as a team, we six. And we saw, no, we stay behind our, our uh, logo and our instructor. We don't go away in different places. And the, the funny thing is, from that point on, we six went together to tournaments all over Germany, uh, 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 Holland, Denmark, also to, to America, but mostly in, in Europe, we all went to, to, together to, to the tournaments. And the funny thing is, in all martial arts association are very, very good top fighters. Huh? That, that is true. But in that time, we went as a team to the tournament. And the funny thing is, maybe I won, or Emmanuel took grand champion, uh, Christian took the grand champion, Dassos, huh? it doesn't matter, one of us did the grand champion. And later, if you we went to tournaments, then other people, other fighter, leave the tournament. They say, oh, the Cascos team is coming, we don't win. And there's, there's a funny picture that we have, uh, was was a tournament with with five or six titles and uh, we won for, from from all these, these six titles we won uh, win five titles and you see uh, Emmanuel was fighting about grand champion at, at uh, one o'clock in the night time but we won we won it all huh? but that was a great time for us but that made us so strong as a team that was interesting to to, to give us uh, power and energy and, and to support each, each other. I think it was our best time for, 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 for fighting a tournament. What, uh, what are your plans now? My plans now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, besides riding your motorcycle. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's just my hobby, to relax. You know? uh, but I, my plans now, uh, I'm waiting to open up my school. I have some very good students. Uh, they, they want to become brown belts and next time black belts. And, and we can we can train uh, the real way like we like we train always we have shutdowns huh? and then in some areas we can teach the kids outside huh? but my school is, is totally closed that's a really nice picture of you mm -hmm. um what you have a is that um college davidson or an indiana no no that's, that's an indian scout i see so do you belong to a motorcycle club yeah mm -hmm. uh, we have a motorcycle club we have the uh, casco's biker team huh? Maybe you, maybe you remember the old logo. In, in, in the 90s, we had, we had a logo. We had a motorbike bike side uh, logo. That's good. It's called the Cascos Biker Team. Wow. All right. That's good. You know, where in your life have you felt that you failed? 
give me a, is there anything that you feel really that you didn't accomplish yet that you want to do i just didn't understand it right uh, but what what what, what do you ask good again something that she said was there anything in your life that so schlimm war was she richtig runtergezogen hat nothing <laughs> nothing I, 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 uh, in my life i i had not so much sad times yeah? maybe sad times was uh, if if horse died uh, 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 yeah or three years ago my, my father there's a sad time yeah but in the rest of my life i have only good times and maybe some hard times yeah but uh, but we, we are martial artists we we have to fight hard times that's what i mean if you go to a tournament uh, you you go down and you stand up again uh, if you don't stand up again you you finish we, we fight as long as we have to live how have martial arts helped you in your life Oh, I think very, very well. Yeah? It's martial arts, it's not only a sport. Yeah? Many people use it today as a sport, but for my life, is it a life philosophy and uh, activated my, my energy. Yeah? And I, I learned to, to, to work with my energy and it's, uh, it forms my, my character. All, all what, what has happened in, in, in the tournaments and the fights and the people we met, they they all form us the martial arts is much more than sport it's 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 to, to build up your character it's mm -hmm. never stop you can't finish martial arts if you start it i i know a lot of people they became good fighter in the tournament but after 10 15 years they they finished that's a funny thing i that's here in germany is a, a very very big uh, um, sport exhibition for for weights and 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 and, and body weight machine and whatever huh? It's, uh, and uh, some year, it's a couple of years ago, I met one top fighter from the Waco, Creed Harbor, one of the top fighters over there. And, and he was a salesman for a bodybuilding machine. And I met him over there and I asked him, man, you are so successful uh, in, in your life. And what is with, with your students? Uh, you teach or you, 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 you train? Huh? No, I, I, I finished train. I'm just selling bodybuilding weights and whatever. And I, I didn't understand it. If you, if you go so long in a, in a martial artist and then you stop it and do a totally different thing. That's, that's, not, that's not my way. So you learned something from that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ne ne never give up. Right. I, I, have no, I, I have no point to retire or whatever. You work further too. Mm. You are our good example to make more and more and more. Huh? Consistency, never stop, keep on never going. Stop, right. Great. What? Um, there's so much more, and I know that there's a lot of questions. But I know that Sunny, some people wrote you some questions. Yes, Siku. Um, there are some questions, and so I'm actually ask them if that's okay, Sifu. I'm gonna ask yeah, Sifu sure. Yarn. Yeah. Okay, Sifu Yarn. I mean. You've done many things for uh, One Hop Kendo in Germany, being the first president and everything. And, you know, uh, a lot of black belts have come and stuff. We, uh, a lot of people want to know, you know, what do you see or what's your vision of the future of One Hop Kendo in Germany now and maybe five years from now because you know you've already set a great example you've already laid down the foundation now just like one hop can know it's always growing it's always learning it's always progressing what do you see or where do you see one hop can do going into the future and i know with your great advice it can go even further because we learn from people who've already succeeded, like yourself. Uh, this question uh, I hear at different times from from my black belts too, and and I, I hopefully in ten years, one of Kendo is still there and and stronger and bigger than today. But uh, normally in life, things are changing. Huh? In that time, if we started with one of Kendo and La Sifu, everything was totally exciting for us. In Germany, at that time, we have 
karate, judo, a little bit taekwondo, huh? but not so many different martial arts. We have boxing, no, no Thai boxing, no MMA, all, all these things, huh? Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, all these things. And from 1975, maybe all four, five, six years, time changing and we had from 70, maybe in the 80s, good time with Kung Fu and then came up Thai boxing. And it was, in, was new, Thai boxing was new. Everybody was to make Thai boxing. Huh? And in the 90s, a little bit started with uh, uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Huh? Everybody wants to make Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And then now it's very famous as uh, MMA. People call it MMA. Huh? Uh, but Kaju Kembo is first MMA all over the world, 1974. It was the first, first MMA. No? And all in, in, in this time period, things are going up, down, up, down. And after 82, if we took the organization from, from CIFO, uh, the Monokan Dukh organization took the organ to run here in Germany, uh, we go up from one or two schools and three groups up to 45 schools and groups with close to four and a half, five thousand students. Huh? Now we are a little bit less. Uh, now we are, I think, 32 or 34 schools huh? and with around about 3,000 students uh, and members in the association. Huh? Yeah. I, I think that's that's normal in, in life. Yeah? But mm -hmm. uh, important is the, the material. We have our red book in, in, in Germany. Huh? First yeah. time we never have a red book. We have only paperwork. Uh, Sivo gave us some papers uh, with, with mm -hmm. some techniques on it. And I remember I wrote all the techniques. I remember hand combination one with five, foot combination one ten, uh, uh, defensive, offensive setup. I wrote it down by myself uh, that I don't forget it. Uh, uh, and from this paperwork on, yes. uh, we did the first book, uh, Petra, my wife. And that time later, yeah. she translate uh, Kachu Kembo Polly's letter and, and, and they put it as a little book and to, together. Uh, and then we have a first, mm -hmm. first right book. And then Sifu made uh, also his book in, in English. And yes. now we have in Germany a very, very thick red book. It's also uh, with Eskrima inside and, and, and wrestling inside. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, these, these books, there's so much material material in what I can do. So much. Huh? Yes. We can learn for the for the next hundred years we can learn. That's that's no problem. Yes. But yes. Uh, but what is important is that that the, the, the instructors we don't give away the ashes, we give away for tradition the fire to make yes. to make it strong, to give the fire. And that's yes. That's a, a different to, to the, our old time is and uh, now in the now we have corona time that's not not so mm -hmm. not so funny but yes. they cancel all tournaments and everything and i think tournaments and, and, and to go to to fight is important yes. to bring up good good personalities to find your mm -hmm. own uh, your own level and to go next yes. higher level huh? if you do only martial arts as a sport then it goes down and maybe sometimes it's gone the level higher and from the sound of it Right now, you know, when Sifu uh, left Germany, you guys took it up to the next level, sort of like the passing of the torch, you could say, right? And, and you guys did a terrific job because, you know, you started with only two or three schools and now you have so many. I mean, that just goes to show that, again, you guys put yourselves into it. And so that does that mean do you guys, the first generation, have, do you have a successor to take over or the passing of the torch to take it to the next level? I mean, like you guys took the torch, you made it brighter so that you have so many more practitioners and instructors and great fighters. Now, do you think that the next generation, which is either the second or third, third generation of black belts, should they be uh, groomed to become the next visionary to take One Hub Kim Do to a wider scope? Uh, yeah, ho hopefully. I think one big difference is in the 80s, if people leave uh, Germany, 
and uh, Warner Kondo was our passion huh? for my sect. Yeah. And yes. um, I like to teach, or the reason why I teach is, I feel like you you know the surfer and the wave, and I am yes. the surfer, and my group yes. is the wave. Uh, and if I yes. stay in that time, if I stay in front of the people, I must be good. It makes me pressure. I need pressure to to, to become better. Yeah, and I like it to teach. Yeah, uh, and uh, yes. uh, fun, funny, uh, interesting thing is, we all we six, Christian, Emmanuel, mm -hmm. Winfried, yes. Dassos, uh, me, Michael. Uh, we all love it to teach too. Uh, yes. And, uh, and that, I think that was a lucky circumstance. Huh? It's mm -hmm. not automatically each good black belt is also a good instructor. That's not possible. Yeah? But in, in our circumstance, we are all six also good instructors. Everybody yes. different, but everybody yes. good. Huh? Yes. And, and later we, we, we made the experience. We are good enough maybe to change our job huh? mm -hmm. to to become professional martial artists with, with our schools. Huh? Yes. And yep. today, hopefully, we will have also very good black belts and they all like it and love it to teach, but uh, I don't want to push them to open up their own school. The, diff the time is different now. Mm -hmm. huh? It's not so easy. Yeah? Maybe you have enough money, two million marks or, or dollar, uh, marks, <laughs> euro or, or, or dollar <laughs> to open up a big, big sports studio. This is okay. Yeah? But for a kung fu school, for, yes. for, for, uh, it's very, very difficult to open up a kung fu school. Huh? Uh, mostly Ooh. black belts today, they have a main job, good jobs, and then they have mm -hmm. a little group by side. That's one of the big changes for the for the future too. Then we, we lost mm -hmm. our schools. You know, that is a good point that, you know, with all the things happening, things do have to change. So does, does that mean we have to grow with the times? Do we, do we, you know, see? One thing that I do remember that sticks into my mind when it comes to Sifu Well is I love the fact that his humbleness when he tells me, you know, all the time, I don't know everything, but if I don't know, that forces me to learn so that this way I can find the answer for you, okay? And so it's really nice to see that he's able to pass that on with you guys. You guys have actually have been forced to learn, right? And to add on to the Red Book. And then also, I hope that that's what you're trying to do with the next generation, is that you want them, Tifu Wao always told me, for me to be really successful is that I hope and pray that one of my students or all my students were so, will surpass me and take it to that next level, which you guys have done as a first generation in Germany. And I'm hoping that is also one philosophy that you guys have set in place. Do you have a successor right now for your school or to help grow One Hub Kendo in uh, Germany? No. No. No, no, no. Uh, I, I, I think we just train as long we, we, we want to train and, and we, as long we live and for the future. Uh, we, we must see what has happened for the next times. So, uh, yes. Uh, we, 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 are, we are looking, but, but uh, mm -hmm. not, not yet. That's not, not easy to find people. And it's, I think that's a big challenge also for us later to, to step a little bit back for, for Sifu and us, it was easy. Sifu is leaving Germany, and then we are just at the point to, to do the work, and then it grows up step by step. But now we are we are here in Germany, and I, I think we all want to make one of Kondo as long we as live. Yes. And then we have the next generation for for the president or for for the board of directors or, or whatever. No? I, I can't see in the, in the, in the future. We, we just can keep our good work and, and we see what's happened. Yes. Oh, yes, for sure. No, I, I mean, you, the thing with martial art is that it will 
keep you alive, keep you young, keep you fit. I, I don't mean that you would stop completely. I'm just, you know, uh, looking towards the future. You know, that, that, that's all I'm asking. I'm just checking to see what is there. Is there a future for one Hupkin Dole when like Sifu Lau or the first generation, you know, goes in a sense. I hope for a long time that you guys are still around yeah, yes, when thanks. I'm older yes, myself. Thanks, yeah. yeah, hopefully for the next 50 or 100 years. <laughs> yes, yes, for sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, but I do have someone who wants to ask a question and, and you know her very well. So what I would actually like to do is get Malia to unmute herself so that this way she can ask you a question. Is that okay, Sifu? Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Malia, Malia, can you please unmute yourself for a second so you can ask a question? Okay. Is, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Let's not have another last week. Okay. My question, who am I going to ask? Well, I'm going to ask you, Yarn. You know, not all of us live forever. And uh, unfortunately, one day, Sifu will pass. Now, when Sifu passes, who's going to be the leader of One Hop Kundo in Germany? Because all of you are leaders in your own department at this time. But if there is no Sifu, who is the founder of One Hop Kundo, what happens to all of you? Who, who are you going to follow then? Who takes over in Germany? Who is your leader? Yeah, you, you, you see the, what, what has happened with the Kachikembo in the United States? Huh? Each Grand Master has opened up his own organization. Huh? And um, here in Germany, it's, Germany is a democratic state, like, like United, United States too. Huh? And we have the German one up Kendo Association and I hopefully this association will keep all schools together, all black belts together. And maybe if we are gone, the next generation came in. That's, 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 a, that's a normal process. If, if an organization is running only by one leader, like look, Caesar, Napoleon or, or whatever, if they're gone, the dynasty of these people are destroyed. But if you have uh, uh, organization is and, and uh, leading under democratic uh, uh, rules, then hopefully we have a change to survive longer and have a future for, for the next time. Yeah? Yeah. We have our red book here in Germany. The red book is so is really big today. It's more history inside also, and that's uh, uh, like our Bible. This red book is our, our Bible, and I, I hopefully the next generation black belts. We'll see it the same same way like like, like we or like like me. Huh? Well, you know, there's only um, Kajo Kempo is Kajo Kempo, One Hop Kyundo, and all of you learned uh, One Hop Kyundo from Alda Kaskas. You didn't learn all your technique from uh, Kajo Kempo. And what uh, brought you to to be who you are today was what you learned from One Hop Kyundo, not Kajo Kempo. Kajo Kempo is an organization. One Hop Kyundo was your style. So if the stylist of what you learned is no longer gone, then you will become Kaj Kempel. You will no longer really be One Hop Kyundo because no one can teach what I'll taught. No yeah. one. But, but one point is, uh, uh, if you talk about the, the material, the techniques, we have our red book. That's written, huh? that's, our, that's our legacy, our, our red book. And all techniques are inside. And uh, if an organization wants to have one leader, we have to vote or, or maybe we say tradition, uh, for an example, you want to be the next leader or Mark want to be the next leader. I think, uh, I think that questions, you can get, get a real answer now. Huh? You must see what, what has happened. Huh? Well, I think probably the question will be, the question will be answered by Sifu himself, because when that day finally comes, when the good Lord calls him home, Sifu will leave what he wants done with all 
uh, one hot kudo schools around the world, in, in Germany, wherever, he will say what's to be done. So I really don't believe it'll be in anybody's hands. He will leave it written what should be done. And so we, you know, I just hope that day never comes. But there's so many of you in Germany that are strong leaders. Uh, and I, uh, there has to be somebody in Germany that would be ahead of the organization. And I just wondered in your mind who you thought that would be. Yeah, but I, 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 I believe there's one, one point. In martial artists, we are all strong personalities. Huh? And uh, personalities martial... have nothing to do with it, ability yeah, and no, the one. No, no, normally, what, uh, what I mean is maybe for example, if Sifu say, okay, if I'm gone, uh, I want, I want the next leader is, uh, is maybe Sunny. That's his wish. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and then we have two ways. I accept it, or I say no. I don't accept it. I hopefully we all stay together for the future. I, that's that's my wish. But you know, that's the experience we we did also. If some people don't get what they want, they leave the organization. We, we, have, we made this, you, you, I, I believe you have no answer. I have no answer for that, really. If, if she would say, if I'm gone, I want Mark as a leader in a one of the organization. I say, okay, I like this idea. I will follow them and I know him personally and I have no problem that I am the older black belt. I will follow him, that's okay for me. What was saying? other black belts i i don't know and that's what mm -hmm. i that, that's the thing that's that's a problem no yes and that's, well, thank that's... you very much for that question there malia um sifu yarn yarn that that that's actually a, a pretty good answer that you've given because you know when it comes to democracy politics and that people will do what people do that's all there is to it. All we can do is, you know, try our best and live a good life. And, you know, one thing I've noticed from you is that you've actually been doing that. And you you shown that when, when you became the first president for the German Association. And, and I know that you're still uh, planting those seeds as well as trying to groom people to help them grow, which is terrific. So again, thank you very much for doing that for the German group. And I know that you're still trying your best to keep grooming these uh, black belts to keep expanding their knowledge because that's what One Hub Kindle is, right? It's always progressing, always learning, always getting better right right so, thank you very much um Sifuel, uh do you have because we're we're running out of time if if anything we would love to have you uh on on a different time because you know uh we are running out of time and i really do appreciate all the people who is on this podcast and again if you do have any questions write it down on the chat or email me personally so that this way we can ask see who you are next time see well question or <laughs> statement or <laughs> yeah i'm um i'm really appreciative of you see for yarn for taking the reign of leading the one hot Kundo group after uh, malia and i left you kept it together and then it you can see the work i see the work and there's a lot of things that would not have happened if you did not take a hold of the uh, the rain or the torch i am not there all the time and therefore you became the leading factor and this is why you are the way you are and i think this had a lot of things to do with your personal life because it it made you realize that even if it was only the the responsibility of the organization it was a responsibility of life and what i mean is just that the legacy that you help create and build up is something that is going to be here long afterwards talking about the people that come afterwards second generation third generation on up i see vision 
of a lot of people collectively doing that and not only the rabbits in your house you know have so much people that are so talented that it it would be a disgrace to not use the talent to bring it all together and that's all we talk about that's the legacy right. of how it continues on a lot of organization get very strong and then they disappear every organization and in life there is up and down in chapters and we are going through a chapter with the pandemic but i see things getting a lot better because what has happened was just that we were forced to use the most important weapon we have and that's the that's the centimeters from this to this the brain we begin to use the brain to start thinking on what to do instead of just the hands and legs or kicking and punching and as long as we use the brains in one hop kendo that still puts us up in a higher food chain that means we can think and because we can think we can develop good organizational skills and i'm very proud to see that there are people that are doing it from the second generation naturally the second generation would not be the second generation if there was no first generation so it all starts from the first generation and i thank you folks so much for doing that what malia and i and mark and those that came back have done we left the legacy and the legacy must continue on leg a c means the leg can see can see forward okay so we move forward woo you know it was interesting to see Poyan talking to you and listening to you and i'm sure we could talk about a hell of a lot more things to come I'll come about but we are running out of time and so sunny before we close i'd like to make sure that everybody know and acknowledge that what sifu yarn has remember this we are old timers and we are the advisors any time that you young people need any kind of wisdom then ask the first generation because it is better to listen to someone who has the experience so that you don't make the mistakes yourself we already did all the mistakes okay so don't repeat the mistakes because that's just been stupid why are you going to be a dumb cough doing that no learn from the wi- the wisdom of the people that already walked before you okay all right i had one so, word of wisdom what your word yeah, of wisdom yarn yeah that's that's funny that's that's easy we have only one life and use it and don't do spend time with stupid people that's all <laughs> that's right absolutely that's a good philosophy i think we're going to make a poster and put your name underneath <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. um, that's to got, yeah, thank just you. We got a couple of people. That, I'm sorry. That, I just want to say uh, thank you for everybody watching me, you know, and uh, hope everybody understand me a little bit, yeah. And uh Sivo, I am proud to be a black belt under you and under Sivo Malia and all these good times we had. Uh we are over 40 40 years together more than the most people are marriage and life right? and i hope for the next 40 that's great fantastic next week uh, you guys join us because we've got um, also we're going to have um Sifu Art Camacho um and then afterwards after that we're going to have Sifu Mike Mathers on on the show we got a whole list of good people that's going to be coming up so you know you folks don't have to uh, stay tuned and signing go ahead and uh you, i'll give you the last couple of minutes sunny uh, thanks for supporting uh-huh. oh you're welcome sifu again thank you for the stories in that and again thank you for what you were doing much more for stories. the organization <laughs> well we're, we're going to definitely have to sit and talk so you can tell me and i can laugh at sifu well a little bit because you know i love hearing these funny stories about sifu well so again folks thank you very much for joining us on this beyond kicking and punching with Sifu Al de Cascos. Again, don't forget he has his book Legacy. Uh you can get it on amazon.com and then also we have his uh 
uh, video sets that you can purchase from the CoscosMartialArt.com, where he has his uh, beginner set of One Hub Kendo as well as DTS, and he's got his uh, big program, the DTS program, which is going to be an ongoing educational program that he's going to be doing real soon. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to either email me. And if you're watching the replay on YouTube, please don't forget to like it. Press that subscribe button, whichever where it is. Hit that bell icon so you'll make sure you know when the next videos are coming out. Okay, again, thank you very much. I really appreciate all of you guys. What you can also do now is you can unmute yourselves and say hello good night goodbye whatever sunny so we have one, yes one, sunny one thing one thing yes uh, as proud sifu is uh, of us i am proud of my black belts that i want to say before i leave uh -huh. oh mm. yes well you've definitely done a great well, job with your black belts be because proud, it, proud black it really shows on how well they've been doing in competitions. I mean, for them to take grand championships and these huge trophies, I remember seeing them and even getting to fight like Sifu Michael. Like, wow, amazing job. So it just goes to show you like Sifu Michael. Wow, amazing job. So it just goes to show you a great instructor have great students. So. Thank you very much for being a great instructor. So again, everybody, if you want to unmute yourself, by all means, say hello and whatever you would like to say, go right ahead. Hello, guys, and uh, thank you so much for everything. Hey, Ahmed, how are you doing? <laughs> hello, Sifu, how are you? Great. Um, finally, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. is Martina. Oh, you still got hey, Ron! <laughs> Oh, I still Very got your work, of Miguel. course. <laughs> hey, guys. Good to see you. Good to see you guys hey, all. I'm so happy to see you all. So many of them. Hey, I, I want to say something too also that, you know, that Malaya has a program called Road to the Top. I think that uh, it's going to be good that you guys also take a look at the program she has. She did, she did an excellent job with good interviews. And I think that's, um, it's sort of like um, enhances of what we are doing collectively. And uh, Ahmed, you, you better stay cool with this in here because I want to know from you because I want to interview you and I want to know what's going on in the Middle East, what Kaju Kambo and what Hap Yundo is doing, doing out there. So stay tuned because we're going to talk more about that. But listen, guys, I know that we, it's time. And if you got you guys all unmuted, at this time, there's just one real big one, yeah? I want everybody to just make as much noise as you can and clap over here. For Sifu Yan to gain on the show. No, it's so glad to see everybody over here. And you know what? And, and what I've noticed, and I just want to say this, and I, I know that it's the fad, but I see a lot of the men right now, especially guys like Ahmed and 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 uh, and uh, you know Mark and other people. Everybody's cutting their hair bald, and maybe I should go bald headed also. And there goes Sifu Yan. And I don't, I don't suggest the women do that, okay? I'm not just talking for you guys. But listen, guys, thank you again, and thank you very much for joining the show. But guys, thank you for joining us. Take care of yourself, and again, take care. See for Michael, you're losing the hair, but it's okay. Borrow some, somebody <laughs> put it on your head. You look beautiful. Thank you very much, guys. Have a nice time. Aloha from Hawaii. Thank Love you. you all. Bye bye. Thank you, Sifu. Aloha. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you guys. Bye.